Hello everyone and welcome back to another video of 10 Minute History. Today we're going to be looking at the Boxer Rebellion. So the Boxer Rebe Revolution was a result of foreign colonial powers forcing free trade upon China after the defeats in the Opium Wars and other such wars. Mostly this was to do with the British, however the Japanese also took part in these wars. This resulted in a very much an anti-Western and an anti-Christian peasant movement being formed known as the Boxers. And they were known that mostly because they were previously martial arts teachers. Now the Boxers, by the point of the siege, had spread all round China and believed in the old religions. They believed in them so much that they that there was common saying that they believed so much in their gods that they had become invulnerable to Western bullets. Of course, that turned out not to be the case. The Boxers typically spent their time murdering Christians and also Christian Chinese people, especially burning churches and intimidating Christian officials who stood in their way. Sorry, Chinese officials. The situation got to a, um, such a tense point that foreign diplomatic leaders requested soldiers to defend Peking, or as it's now known, Beijing. This resulted in 400 soldiers arriving to Peking to defend the foreign embassies or legislations. On June 5th, 1900, the Boxers cut the railroads from Tianjin to Peking, resulting in Peking becoming isolated. This is the first action towards the siege. The Boxers then entered the city and were captured by foreign soldiers. However, it angered the Boxers to the point where thousands burst down the poorly built walls that were realistically at that point just bricks that were stacked on top of each other and burnt down churches in the city. They also attacked British and American soldiers but were repelled. In mid-June the Qing government, which was the current empire of um, China, so if you didn't realise there were multiple different, there was the Ming, the Qing, um, probably said that wrong, and they were still undecided about the boxers as some saw them as a bunch of rabbles who could be easily defeated and others saw them as a way to get rid of the foreign powers. I'm guessing you can guess which ones were the smart ones. Now at the time, Empress Dowager Zi was in charge of China, as although she was obviously a woman, um, she still withheld power by basically sort of holding back other um, younger emperors. Now she made her choice on June 17th when foreign warships attacked the Taku Fort in an attempt to gain communication with Peking. This resulted in the Qing government joining the boxers. And on June 19th, the Empress Dowager sent a diplomatic note to each embassy to inform them that they had 24 hours to leave Peking or China will find it a difficult matter to give complete protection. Following this, on June 20th, Baron von Kettler, who was the diplomat of Germany to China, was murdered by Captain N. Hai of the Qing Army, thus beginning the 55-day siege. Now, each nation did take responsibility to defend their own quarters in Peking. However, obviously, these areas were not in the most defendable positions as after all they were not built to withstand a siege. There were walls around Beijing, however the leg legislations were not around those areas. So the Austrian and Italian forces abandoned their positions and collaborated with the French and Japanese in order to essentially strengthen other positions. However, the German and American forces did hold positions on the Tartar, which was one of the main defensive walls built around Peking in 1400. Now the majority of civilians hid in the British leg legislation, it was a total of 473 foreign civilians inside there. Now, the um, Chinese Christians were not counted as they were hiding all around the city along within the um, um, foreign quarters. Now, in terms of weaponry, it was a massive mis um, problem. The American Marines were the only ones who had sufficient attack ammunition, while the Italians had a small can cannon. And in total, there were only three machine guns. The foreign forces were able to find an old cannon barrel and managed to convert it into a working cannon, However, it wasn't that effective. Although it stated that the siege did begin on June 20th, there were no major military actions against the foreign forces. The only real things that happened were boxers setting fire to areas around the um, foreign quarters, most notably the Library of Peking, which was completely destroyed along with all of the books in it, which were some were never copied, so lost quite a lot of knowledge there. However, throughout most of the siege, it was American and German troops that faced the worst of it. From June 20th to July 17th, the forces atop the Tartar Wall faced nightly attacks from the Boxers and Qing Army. These were mostly included just rifle shots being fired above the um, foreign forces to keep them awake at night, um, a sort of form of psychological warfare. They also used firecrackers and cannon fire to keep them awake. So it was more or less not a direct attack, but a more psychological attack, very similar to what you'd see in World War One with um, the artillery barrages. However, the foreign but this, the main problem happened on June 30th, when the Chinese forces won against the German Marines and forced them off the wall, leaving only the Americans. Now, it's described as by the American commander that the American troops felt like they were trapped and were just waiting for the killing hour. 
The foreign forces, however, knew that the wall was important. This was the main. This is because the wall actually faced the foreign quarters of all the embassies, meaning that if the Chinese took them, took them all, they'd have basically an open line of fire to attack the armed forces. So the um, Eight Nation Alliance, it's now become known, attacked the wall at 2 a.m. on July 3rd and killed 20 Chinese soldiers and retook the wall. Now, because it was at 2 a.m., it was a night attack, meaning that it can be classified as successful, but also the Chinese weren't in a position to really resist as they weren't expecting it. But overall, a successful attack with no casualties, only one injured. The main problem faced with the Chinese was not only that they didn't have a clear plan of attack, but also there was a rivalry between boxer commanders and those who opposed the boxers. It became such a problem that em Dowager Empress Xiji declared a truce for negotiations on June 25th to sort out her own internal problems. However, it only lasted a few hours. Then on July 17th, she declared a ceasefire and sent supplies and aid into the legislations as a sign of goodwill. July 13th was claimed as the worst day of the siege, as Japanese and Italian forces were driven back to their last line of defence, while a bomb was detonated under the French legislation, pushing the French back. Now, the French actually expected the Chinese to use sappers to try and dig under them, and had pulled back further than normal. However, the Chinese had continued to dig and laid mines and blew them up. However, by July 13th, 17th, obviously fighting had died down and the armistice began, um, after the Empress obviously declared a ceasefire. But it was not to last. See, the Eight Nation Alliance, that was Britain and all the other nations that were being besieged, had sent an army to try and relieve Peking. And on the 13th of August, the Chinese forces heard of this army arriving as they were only five miles out by this point. They began with an artillery barrage to resiege the city on the 13th of August um, on the British forces. However, by that point, it was too late as um, the Eight Nation Alliance entered the city on August 14th. It became a sort of race to see who could get to the um, foreign embassy quarters the fastest. However, the British won with minimal resistance, while many of the other forces either got lost or were pushed back. This ended the siege um, uh, with an eight-nation alliance victory. And also, with the Empress hearing that the Allies had entered the city, she fled the city um, and started ruling from Xi'an. However, it did result in the Treaty of Beijing being drawn up only a few years later, which did allow more foreign troops into um, China. Now, when the Empress was allowed back into Peking, it was declared that the Chinese would not have to secede any more land, which was the only thing that really kept the Empress from allowing this peace to from happening, although there were many advocates for keeping the war going on, as they felt they could still win. Overall, it wasn't surprising the, that the um, Allied forces did win, as they had a massive advantage in technological power, mainly due to the latest innovations in gun technology, headed up by the Prussian military, which later became the German military, with bolt-action rifles becoming the standard instead of muskets. It was also helpful that the British had their advanced warships available to um, siege coastal provinces. Overall, it was a rather disastrous war, um, but it wasn't really meant to be a war that would fight them. It was essentially a war of terror, very similar to what you'd see in Afghanistan and Iraq. Thank you for watching.